Hey, good morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. We're out here early, so might be a little bit low on uh, sunlight. It's supposed to be 110 today, so I'm trying to get out here while it's still not too bad. Okay, so anyway, this is my latest build. It's a based on a new Frontier Armory uh, upper and lower receiver. I have a Wilson Combat BCG in it, um, B5 buttstock. Um, so what we're doing today is um, we're gonna put a bipod on the uh, Aero Precision Atlas R handguard rail. And I thought we'd talk about the two styles of Harris legs uh, adjustment. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the, the bipod mount uh, made by Magpul versus the Midwest Industries. Okay, so this is the Midwest Industries mount. And um, the difference, the main difference between the Midwest Industries and this Magpul is how it mounts onto the, the actual slots. So we'll talk about that for just a second. Okay, so because of the way the Midwest Industries bipod mount is designed, you're you can mount theirs in one slot or you can bridge two slots if you want to. So they give you the option to mount it two different ways. Um, Magpul, however, only allows you to bridge two slots. So you can, you can bridge the slots that way and have an opening here or you can bridge the slots that way and have your opening back here. But the, the whole spacing and where they put the lug does not allow you to mount into one slot. So you're not going to have as much uh, real estate or as many options to, to mount this on your rail. So why does that matter? Okay, well, depends on where your gas block is and how low of a profile handguard or handguard rail that you're using. So I'm going to show you here that on this particular rifle barrel rifle length gas system the aero precision uh, atlas r handguard you'll see that these screws butt up against the gas block um, depending on where i i put this up here okay so this would be the ideal location for the short leg version here six to nine inch a uh, harris bipod and you can see the mounting hole here where it goes through into the swivel lug. And that lines up right about there. And you can see that that just kind of keeps the, the rubber feet away from the blast zone of the, the muzzle device. So whenever I mount a bipod, I always take that into consideration as I try to keep the, the rubber feet or anything that could get uh, cooked uh, back behind the muzzle a, a little bit. So anyway... As I was saying in the earlier clip, this location for the Magpul is not going to work because that screw right there, I'm pushing on it, is bottomed out against the, the gas block. So I know some of you are thinking, well, why don't you just trim that screw and knock about two or three threads off? Well, the other issue is the T-nut uh, thickness. It gets very close to the gas block. I won't say it's it's going to touch the gas block, but it's really close. And if you've ever seen some slow motion videos of how much an AR barrel moves inside a handguard, you might be a little surprised. So that T-nut's getting kind of close to the gas block. And um, I would be afraid that the barrel's going to, going to tap the T-nut also. So I can't put it there. And if I go down to the next slot... I had the same issue, but on the back side of the, uh, on the rear side of the gas block, the screw's going to hit. So the next location would be here. And I just stuck the screw in, and it looks like it just barely, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it just kind of clears the barrel. Like I said, that's probably not enough room for that barrel jumping around, it, it may make contact with the with the barrel. So the next place I can go would be right there. 
and we're kind of getting back. And like I said, the original goal is to get this as far out on my handguard as I can, but keep it away from the muzzle. So we're kind of getting backed up on this handguard, but once I get all this mounted, I'm going to show you why I think this is okay where it's at. Okay, so for those of you that might not be familiar with uh, Harris bipods, this is their what they call their swivel version. Now, in my opinion, they should rename it to Cant because it only because that's that's how it moves right there. And they changed their uh, their tensioning for the uh, what they call swivel, which I call Cant. Uh, to this bigger knob, which is plastic. And here's the original knob, quite a bit smaller. And um, in order for me to get the kind of tension that I like, I always end up having to put some electrical tape on a pair of pliers to get enough tension on that to where the rifle's not flopping around. So having a bigger knob, I think that's going to be a nice improvement. However, this is made out of plastic, so I'm not sure about it. And you can buy aftermarket levers. I think even Harris sells a, a lever. And I've never seen one. I don't know if they're made out of plastic or aluminum or steel or what they're made out of, but they'll have a lever that you can you can put on here in, instead of these knobs. But anyway, I think that's probably going to be an improvement. Okay, so I prefer the notched leg. And what you do is you push this button, and they're spring-loaded. And I didn't push it very well. Normally they come out pretty good. But anyway, you can set different heights on your legs with the notch. And um, then there's a style over here, which I kind of made a mistake buying this one. I wasn't paying attention to what the, the bag said, but I'll show you how this one works. Okay, so on this style, it works opposite of the notched leg. Uh, you can pull this all the way out and it'll lock into place and then you, you push your button to release it and it's spring loaded to close. Now, if you want to adjust it anywhere in between, there's kind of an infinite adjustment on this range and that's this tensioning screw here. So, um, let me get it in a little bit and I'll... Okay, so you're gonna loosen this and tighten it to set your leg. And I, I don't know, I don't... You're kind of relying on the friction of this this thumb wheel to, to keep this in the position. Yeah, I, I'm sure it works fine, but I don't know. It just, I like the notch version better. And then, uh, like I said, if you if you release this, it'll go closed all the way. Let me see if I can uh, get my fingers out of the way. And uh, so this is not my preferred leg. I, I like the notch one better. But other than that, it's pretty much the same exact bipod. Okay, so I might've already mentioned it. I already forgot, but anyway, this is a non-standard length handguard. This is 16 and a half inches. Most uh, rifle length handguard rails come in at 15 inches for rifle length. So this is a inch and a half longer, and I just went with a slightly longer handguard just because I went with the 18 inch barrel, and I wanted to cover up a little bit more of the barrel, so that's why we ended up with this handguard. So even though the bipod looks like it's sitting really far back, it's not as far back as you might think, you know, because that's where it would probably be with a 15 inch handguard. So anyway, now that we have the, this mounted where we need it to and the screws inside have plenty of clearance without me having to trim them and we're not going to hit the, uh, the barrel or the gas block. Um, it ended up being in the same place. So, as my 16 inch rifle. So if you see the bipod here, you'll see that it's in a good spot. And then I think, I don't know if I already mentioned it, but having that mount in that spot also allows me to go with a longer leg bipod and still keep them out of the blast zone. So anyway, um, that's all for right now.
Pete, North Las Vegas, over and out.